final quarter of 2022 and it's another um, best EV deals on the mobility scheme video. Um, uh, bit difficult this one because I don't think they're already left. There's no cars left on the scheme. And what are left are one stupid amount of money. But the screen capture is going here so uh, let's just have a look at what they've got for us this quarter. Um, now if you remember last quarter we had we still had quite a few on no um, like no upfront cost and there is one or two still left on here but they're basically smarts. Smart for two and smart two two with a 17.5 kilowatt hour battery that doesn't even do 100 miles. So no, I'm not going to not going to recommend them. And um, the vehicle I was recommending last quarter because it was kind of like the only one ones left, or the two vehicles I was recommending last quarter, because they were the, like the only ones left with like a small upfront cost, are still on there, but they're wanting stupid money for them now. Here's the Mocha um, E. Uh, they're wanting four hundred ninety nine pound upfront for that one. Um, no. I'm not going to pay that for a Mocha E up front on the scheme. Uh, if you want the ultimate edition, it's 799. I mean, 799, I was going to get a 60. About first quarter of this year, that was the price, or the last quarter of last year, 499 and 799 was the price they were wanting up front for a 64 kilowatt Kona electric, which does 300 miles. This Mocha struggles to get over 200. That's how bad things have got. Um, I'm not paying a grand up front to have an uh, a Nissan Leaf, um, and this is this is the really big jaw dropper for me. The Corsa electric last quarter was no upfront cost. They're now wanting a grand up front for it. Now I know the semiconductor shortages and inflation and all sorts of other stuff going on in the world today, but that sort of increase over one quarter is just it's just not on. It's, it's just not right. And the funny thing is, this is the quarter when our vehicle comes under, becomes ready for putting its order in for the next, for its renewal. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I was really keen on getting an electric vehicle next, but uh, now it's looking like, you know, sorry planet, sorry environmentalists, these kind of, pay, these kind of like costs increases just don't justify me getting an electric vehicle next. Put on top of that the fact that when I had my Nissan Leaf and uh, most of the public charging was free and when I did need a charger at home it was 14 pence a kilowatt or less on the home tariff. Uh, they are now, the tariff now is 35 pence a kilowatt hour. Just increased 10 pence a kilowatt because of this massive increase in the uh, basic wholesale of price of uh, electricity and it's just like you know it was almost worth it when, when petrol was like a two ninety two pound a litre but petrol's going down again now so I'm looking at how many miles I've been I've done in that in that HS out there. It's done less than four thousand miles because of the pod just done four thousand miles because we've got it just before the pandemic. We've hardly used it and I'm looking at all these other vehicles I've been looking at don't have a boot big enough to put mum's new wheelchair in so that one does so I'm thinking now personally looking at these prices I can recommend don't bother getting an electric vehicle on the scheme anymore right now don't we're going to probably go keep that one for another year or I might try and put an order in for the automatic one because it has the of the same, uh, the automatic, um, I think it's 699 up front, but that's another thing that the, because this is getting so stupid, the scheme and the, the waiting lists are so long for vehicles to come be delivered now. The motorability I've just checked out are actually offering giving you £250 on the delivery of a new car, you get 250 quid back, so that's how bad it's getting for them. So I don't know who to blame, I don't know what the what the blame, but it's just the fact that this has made made my hope of getting an electric vehicle next un, unfeasible un, these kind of prices I'm not paying like 1,699 for a Corsa Ultimate E 
when it was wasn't even it was like ninety nine pound last quarter up front for it. I'm not going to be paying that. And I've now got the dilemma if I come out of here. I mean, I'm not even going to go through the rest of the prices. I mean, look at this. There's the Fiat 500 still on the scheme, but they want 2,007, is it 2,195 up front for it? They're offering that for free last quarter. So it's just, it's just untenable. Untenable. They had the, the new Nissan, I think it's Aura 4x4 EV, whatever thing that's just come out. That's, um, that was on the scheme last quarter, but the one near grand up front, that's just been taken off the scheme now. And, I, and if you go back and look at the last quarter video, you'll see the, these Fiat 500s that they're now wanting more than two grand up front for, they were giving them away for no, no for cost last quarter. That's just, you know, I was hoping because, you know, it's quite a while since the pandemic kind of ended in most countries, like the lockdowns and everything, people are going back to work. I was kind of hoping that the semiconductor shortage would have was coming to an end. I was hearing stories of it and I was kind of hoping that this quarter we would have a better selection and lower prices, but it's not. It's just going up and up and up and up. And I just can't. There was a new MG4 EV come out. I was kind of hoping that would be on the scheme. This, this, this. I mean, if that was on the scheme for like a few hundred up front, I probably would have put a border in it come December, which is when we can first put an order in for our next vehicle. But now it's like, it's just not on there. It's not on there at all. I'm just going to go straight to the last page on this because yeah, three nine nine up front, four nine nine. It's just stupid. You can't. I mean, even the they're just not on there anymore. So while I'm here, I'm going to go back and do another search from scratch. And I, I know I've had people in the previous videos. Can you get the petrol versions of that? Well, I'm going to look at them now because that is the um, probably the only possibility for us next. I mean, I'm still in two minds whether just to keep that because you can't keep your current vehicle for another year at the moment because of the shortage of vehicles. I'm, you know, and maybe it's next year I'll get something that I really, you know, really would like on the scheme because at the moment it's a case of keeping the one you've got or getting the one same one again. It's like. You know, let's just go to advanced search here. So we've got everything on here. I haven't got just electric, a whole lot. So going back in time to when people still drove, you know, to when electric vehicles were were even on the scheme, you can still get a few things with no upfront cost, but they're all super minis, like i tens, and don't want. Don't want. Do you want a Ford Eco Sport hatchback, whatever that is? Not for costing. Uh, don't think so. And there's probably on the petrol models. There's probably two you'd might want to go for for a bit more space. You probably want to go if it gets us all up here. Uh, I said that already. There's a Renault Clio hatchback TCE 90 Evolution 5 door. Oh, no, that's not big enough boot. I go X, maybes. So you can get the uh, petrol Corsa for no upfront cost. There is the Yaris hybrid hatchback you can get for no upfront cost. That's a possibility, but God knows how long you're going to have to wait for a new delivery from Japan with semi. With the semiconductor shortage on them, you're probably looking at a year waiting this to get a um, new Yaris hybrid at the moment. Uh, there's just nothing. There's nothing that sticks out and says, "Oh, I'd like to have one of them next." There's just nothing. There's the uh, Hyundai Byron. Mild hybrid man manual, 199. I don't know what size boot that's going. Maybe it's that one. Maybe it's one of them. Of course, I'm not even. Yeah. 
I've never been a big fan of Vauxhall anyway. I was going for the Mocha E last order, suggesting that one because there was just nothing else reasonable. But that's even that's priced itself out of the market now for me. Um, go a bit further. There's nothing, nothing, and then we come to what I've got now. It's now three nine nine upfront cost. I mean, we got that for no upfront cost three years ago, but it's when it, when it when there was a brand new model just come out. It's now a model that's three years into its life span, and they want three nine nine for it up front for the manual one. So, I mean, if you've got a big wheelchair and you're not doing many miles, that's probably the one. I would recommend get, just get one of them at the moment. Just get a HS, MG HS. It's um, got a big boot, and if you're not doing many miles, you won't notice it because you won't notice the bad fuel economy. It gets about 30, 35 miles per gallon. It's the biggest downside to that. That's, that's basically the reason why I started looking for electric yes, next because that had the room, but it just its economy is naff. I mean, really naff compared to what I'm used to, like with LPG vehicles and EVs and. But uh, it's got the boot, and you can fit all you can fit most wheelchairs and that in there. Big wheelchairs, chunky ones, in the boot of that thing. If you want something slightly smaller, that you suppose you got the ZS one. That's for that's for the same amount up front. And you got golfs. It's, it's just nothing. There's nothing that makes me go. Ooh, I'd want one of them. Here you go, you've got the Mocha E500 up front, that's a joke, it's a P-take. Um, more ZS's. There's the, now uh, that's something I might look at, there's the Astra Sport Tourer, but um, basically the new Astra Estate. I had a look at that when I was looking at the Mocha E in the showroom. Uh, the Mocha E, I went, eh, plasticky interior, plasticky things. And I went and sat in the, in the standard Astra and it did have some soft touch materials in the cabin. And the estate would hopefully have enough room for the for the uh, wheelchair, but it's uh, 599 up front, it's a manual. Mm. So, possible recommendation there. I'm not even doing a list anymore. I used to do a list of what we, top ones were because there is no EVs on the on on out there now on this scheme that I can recommend. It's just way too much to want up front for them. So there you go, the HS, the, the automatic one. Five nine nine. If I had that one back in good condition, I should hopefully get six hundred back off it. And there's that 250 thing up front that they, they, put, they get on delivery now with an automobile car, which you might actually see for another year with the d delivery times at the moment. But hopefully there's enough of those lying around for us to get one fairly early on. So that's probably what we're going to go for, the automatic one and then. Why do I want the automatic one? Because the automatic has the adaptive cruise control, uh, the lane keep assist, basically the self-driving stuff. Uh, the the automatic one also has the uh, traffic assist where it'll, when you're in um, traffic jam it'll just follow the car in front at, at a safe distance using its radar so you just need to steer no feet on the pedals so I'll be looking at that just for less stressful driving and, and that's it, I, I can't really say anything more than that, it's been really disappointing seeing how this has went downhill, downhill, downhill. I kept hoping it would come up again and be rosy by the time um, it came for us to order, but it's not, it's not. So the whole EV thing as far as I'm concerned is knocked on the head. But on a brighter note, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll continue doing these videos even if I get to petrol one next, I'll continue doing them because hopefully in a year or two this has all been sorted out. But the way the energy market's going in that, I just personally I just can't see. Unless you really do lots of miles and you get used to doing lots of charging on the on, on, when you're out and about, and you're not paying the upfront costs, 
an EV is kind of, it doesn't make sense anymore. It was making sense, starting to make sense, and then this came along and it's just like, killed it short. So, um, yeah, so thanks again for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.